All right, so learning from business mistakes. Oh, man, we've made a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and I love reading articles from investors or other people when they talk about big misses. Um, I think there's some infamous big misses that you can think of. Warren Buffett uh, and Google, right? Yeah, Warren Buffett and Google. Uh, Time Warner AOL merger was a huge business mistake. Um, you know, I've heard from Vayner and a few other people. Vaynerchuk passed on Airbnb, I believe, because he felt and like Uber. And, and Uber. Uber. And Travis was one of his friends, too. Um, and he's mentioned that a lot of times. That's partially what drives him because he couldn't even imagine, um, you know, the amount of money that came from that. I was watching a documentary recently where um, the founder of Atari, I, his name escapes me, but um, Steve Jobs worked for him at one point and came to him and said, you know, do you want... 30% of Apple for 50 grand or something absurd and he passed on it. So you can't even count the return on investment that would have come from something like that. Uh, so I think it is, it's kind of helpful to go back and look at past business mistakes. And yesterday we were having a conversation where we were looking back towards all the employees that were here and for the people that did leave, why they left. And in certain circumstances, um, essentially leaving, every employee we've ever hired who, who got fired, who left on their own, Right. Who's still here, obviously. Um, yeah. But in looking back at that, I think that there was a couple things that I saw where we recognize now we do things differently because of those experiences. Yep. Um, and then in talking with one of our new biz dev, biz dev hires, talking about some of the packages that we offered in the early <laughs> stages of our company, that was a business mistake that thank God no one said yes to because it really would have been hard for us to keep up with. So um, I kind of well, wanted to just wrap back and forth a little bit well, on one, some of what we thought were mistakes. One, just to be completely transparent, I think the first NBA team we pitched, $1,000 a month, and we were trying to do a year deal, lock them in, yep. and the idea was 30 pieces of original content. So that could be a social graphic, it could be an infographic, it could be a short video, but for $1,000, you would get 30 pieces of content. And which, at that time... <laughs> We articles, have, written yeah. articles was still part of that. So you can have us interview somebody and transcribe the article. So we could have been on the hook for an article a day, every single day for $1,000. But this was when there's what, you know, three people, just the owners of the company were there. Um, and we're trying to just get our first couple of deals. But we look back at those situations like, well, if four and the Houston Rockets, no disrespect, but bad job by them. I mean, they would have been in a uh, in gold mine there for a year because yep. that would have been a lot of cool content one per day, essentially every single month. Um, and they didn't take it. So like you mentioned, if five NBA teams, so let's do it. We would have been doing backflips. Like, yeah, our business is going great. We're making $5,000 a month, yeah. but we would be, we'd be getting paid trouble. less than less than minimum wage and working <laughs> like, you know, 19 dogs. hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a mistake. And I also think from a pricing strategy, scenario we priced it so low that it didn't seem valuable and that's why i think people wound up passing on it um like I, there's got to be a catch well and you know i showed you something yesterday from design pickle which is coming up sponsored on all my feeds but it's unlimited graphic design for all your marketing for 379 it's like you know it's going to be garbage it yeah. has to be because there's no way to get good stuff for that cheap or there's unlimited. like you know some 96 catch, some hour slas or something, or something. Yeah. um so, yeah, so I think, you know, a couple of the topics that we touched on yesterday was one of the mistakes we made early is when we hired people, um, we really didn't have a clear expectation or list of job roles and responsibilities. Yeah, like so. when you start this job, here's what we expect from you. And this is how we'll consider you being successful in the role. Um, because we were growing so fast, we would bring people in, and then anything that we wanted them to do, we'd have them do. Yeah. And I think that was frustrating for some of the early employees. Yeah, and I think, I mean, when you look at it, Monday morning quarterback or hindsight being 2020, it's like, how could you not have at least a half sheet of a couple of job responsibilities? But I think in business, like anything else, you just really don't learn some of those lessons until you go through it, make the mistake, and then say, we got to find a way to not yeah. do this anymore. Well, and um, in, the, in the really early stages, it's very hard to do because your day-to-day -day is, so, is so different. You can't um, stop and think and like, hey, how can I make this yeah. better? And so Mac, one of our earliest designers that we brought on who was you know really instrumental in some of the early projects, but what he did when he started versus what he did six months later was – far and away just totally different and that startup 
start a business in a, in a yeah. nutshell. Yeah, I mean, his, but his role really did change. I um, think one thing too, I mean, outside of business, outside of, uh, sorry, roles and responsibilities, is just overall onboarding. I think one thing we've done just very recently, and again, this is not stuff that we are so smart and we think of it ourselves, but just like welcoming a new member to the of the team. Uh, now we do something where when you go to your desk, you have your laptop, your new phone, potentially uh, an STN polo, an STN coffee mug, an STN t-shirt. And it's a little thing. There's also a note from everybody that says, like, welcome to the team. Can't wait to get started and talks about how your first day is going to go. That little gesture, I think, when you first walk in is so much better than, again, some of our original employees were like shoved in a corner. <clears throat> like, hey, uh, just shadow John for two hours and he'll kind of give you the ropes. And, yeah, the bathroom's over there. And it's kind of like maybe you left a job or maybe you like picked us over somebody else and you come in those first couple of days like, did I make a mistake? I kind of feel weird. I don't yeah. know anybody. Nobody's talking to me. Um, and then Chris did something really cool. Uh, one of our newer employees said, hey, you should have like a two truths, one lie type of deal just to kind of open it up and not make it break up. the ice with the entire staff. So yeah. we've done that too with uh, Lise and Will, so our two newest employees. And I think it's cool. It's not awkward. It's not like, let's go around the room and tell everybody what we do and a fun fact about you. It just kind of opens it up. So those are things that I think people walk in day one thinking that we were the um, – visionaries behind those but it's just a lot of reading a lot of you know trial and error really yeah and i mean you would think in hindsight that it was intuitive to have all of those things but it's really not you almost i think when we came up with the concept of like let's have some stuff on the desk it's because we saw somebody's picture on twitter yep. and they were like great way to start and really? it had all this stuff and, like, and we were already giving a lot of the stuff to these people maybe not the swag the polos and the coffee mugs but you know people would come they'd have a new computer and they'd have a nice desk and they'd have a phone um and it just wasn't presented in a nice way. So presenting it in that fashion and then, like you mentioned, just an onboarding in general. Training. Uh, because we had one person who maybe wasn't going to be a good fit long term anyway because we were hiring in a rush. But there was zero onboarding. You and I were not in the office at all. They started and we really didn't have a great communication with anybody who was going to train her. Yeah. And you added someone to, to your sales department, if you will, um, recently. And you're like, I'm not even going to mess with this until I come back from vacation. I think in the early stages, like, let's get them started. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll get them up and running. And that t by the time we can hit the ground running, but we're like, let's just push it out a few more weeks. So that way, when he day one, he could be useful and we can have all the training procedures down. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, going back to. Uh, higher, slow, fire, fast, but also like don't bring a person on until you're ready to officially onboard them. I think is super important. Yeah, but uh, you know, I do think it's it is important to talk to other business owners, read other books from from business yeah. owners, and totally be you know open to trying new things because there's certain things that we do now that in the beginning of the company we were like we don't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. We used to say that about contracts. Or we didn't want to have like, oh, we don't want to have like, oh, there's this many revisions. Um, yeah. We didn't want to be like Yard House where it was like there's all these rules and everything. And now we realize the value in that. And it's actually not just like, oh, that's dorky. It gives structure to the company and it makes it actually feel like a business rather than just a bunch of people yep. trying around. to figure it out. And there's no answers to questions. So, um, yeah, being able to just kind of. And I always say like to get better at doing pull-ups, you have to do a lot of pull-ups. And it's like to get better at business, you have to run a business and yeah. you know be able to be self-aware enough to look at things like that was pretty silly while while we doing that let's do it let's do it a different way and I